It is the 2nd of December at around 8 p.m. in 1942, and you have been tasked with escorting a convoy to Libya to help relieve the Italian army and its German allies who were being hard pressed by the Allied advance after the victory at Al Alamein. The steamer Veloce, your charge, has been torpedoed by the British, who have planes operating from Malta, and as you steam to render assistance, four large British destroyers, each one outmatching you one for one, let alone all four together, appear. You are Captain Foley and your ship, the legendary torpedo boat Lupo, the luckiest ship in the Italian fleet, has minutes to live. There is a lot to be said about the performance of Italy during the Second World War, with it being the butt of so many jokes. Jokes that are quite usually misinformed, and don't consider the fact that the Italian government was totally devoid of reality when it decided to join the war. But what is often ignored is that there was one service, above all, that shined and outperformed as best it could given the circumstances, and that is the Italian Navy. Sadly, in the Anglophone world, we don't tend to hear a lot about the war from the Italian perspective, at least during the start of the war before they you know, switched sides. And so today, I want to introduce you to the story of the torpedo boat Lupo, the luckiest, depending on your perspective, ship in the Italian Navy, who during the war flew right in the face of the myth that Italy was the useless Axis member. Lupo was built in the interwar period as one of the speaker class torpedo boats. See, there were multiple thought processes going on at the time as to what a destroyer or torpedo boat should be, with some of the British destroyers going for an all gun armament with smaller torpedoes and some of the other ones going for a more mixed approach. The Italians, knowing that they would never be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the major Western nations, fell back on what had worked so well for them during the First World War against Austria-Hungary. The speaker class were built entirely with the memory of the sinking of the Sant Isfahan, a small craft that could thunder along at 34 knots and launch a swarm of torpedoes before retreating at that same speed. The speakers, therefore, would only be armed with three smaller 100mm or 4 inch guns for defence, with four torpedo tube launchers being the main armament. The Lupo was commissioned on the 20th of February 1938 and was about 82 metres long, registering in at just over 1,000 tonnes full load, with her crew being 110 men strong. And given that she was an Italian ship, I do swear that extra emphasis was made on making her look sleek and beautiful. The Italian entry into the Second World War found the Lupo stationed at Rhodes, at the time an Italian possession, and a key naval base in the eastern Mediterranean Sea. Lupo was given the position of flagship of her little flotilla, consisting of her sisters the Lince, Libra and Lira. I am so sorry to all my Italian viewers, I'm doing my best. In December 1940, the squadron would come under command of Captain Francesco Mimbelli, and would be ordered to sea to assist in convoy escort duties regarding the war in Greece that the Italian army was, well, we'll just say not doing too well at. On the 31st of January, Lupo and Libra would attack a British convoy on the way to Piraeus, namely the port of Athens. Despite the escort of three destroyers, each one being able to fight and beat the Italians, the Lupo managed to land a torpedo on the tanker Desmalia, damaging it so badly that it would ride out the war after being towed to India as a supply ship in Bombay. Barely a few weeks after this feat, the Lupo, along with her sisters Lynche, Crispy, and Sella, assisted in the recapture of Castellarozio. The Lupo and her squadron would become famous as examples of dependable little ships that, if they were called upon, would make sure your convoy got from A to B in one piece, and if need be, they would smack around any Allied ship or convoy in the way. Lupo's legend would be made, though, in May 1941, when she was ordered to escort 20 small boats with German troops in them to assist in the invasion of Crete. On the night of the 22nd, the little convoy was intercepted by three British cruisers, Dido, Orion, and Ajax, and their four accompanying destroyers. Lupo, without missing a beat, turned and charged the Allied cruisers, laying a thick smoke cloud. The British fleet turned and fired into the little destroyer, which kept steaming towards them, her small size meaning that of the 18 large caliber shell hits, only three would actually explode. 
Lupo swung around again, unleashing her torpedoes at the British cruisers and then charging straight into their formation, narrowly avoiding a collision with one of the cruisers, possibly Ajax, and bringing the combat so close that the Orion reported friendly fire. The British force would sink 8 of the 20 smaller craft, but Lupo kept them so busy that their ammunition ran short, and with the threat of air attack looming from the morning, the Allied squadron withdrew, leaving Lupo able to return to collect survivors. Captain Mimbelli would be awarded the Gold Medal of Military Valor for this action, and the Lupo itself received the Silver Medal to be praised proudly on her ensign. The Lupo would be repaired over the next few months, returning to escort duty in the Aegean Sea that October, where she went to the rescue of her damaged sister Altair. Lupo would attempt to save Altair and put her under tow, but unfortunately during the night the Altair would sink, her crew being taken off by Lupo and saved. In November that year, alongside her sister ship Cassiopeia, yes, there were a lot of speakers, about 32 in fact, Sweden even had two, Romulus and Remus. But yes, alongside her sister, Lupo was tasked to escort two German vessels from Athens to Benghazi. During the voyage, the little convoy of four came under the attack by the Royal Navy's Force K, consisting of a pair of cruisers and destroyers. Lupo, without missing a beat, turned and charged, ordering Cassiopeia to lead the convoy to safety, but the British knew what was up this time and pressed on. Sinking the convoy and driving the little Italian torpedo boats off, damaging Lupo and sending her back for repairs. Lupo would return to service in March 1942, with a new commander, the now decorated Mimbelli, leaving to a command in the Black Sea in support of Operation Barbarossa. Her escort duty resumed with three sister ships, running together escorting a convoy to Tobruk. This duty would continue, with further convoy work until the 30th of November, where she was ordered to escort the merchant ships Veloce and Cesone from Tripoli to Naples under the command of Giuseppe Foldi. Convoy C would set out from Naples on the 30th of November 1942, consisting of the steamers Cesone and Veloce, along with an oiler who, which would divert to Trapani, and escorted by the torpedo boats Sagittario, Ardito, Aretuza, and of course, Lupo. At 8pm on the 2nd of December, after three days of sailing, the convoy found itself under attack by Albacore torpedo bombers from squadrons 821 and 828 on the island of Malta. During the attack, the torpedo boats tried their best to drive off the aggressors, shooting down one aircraft, but a torpedo was released and it struck the steamer Veloce, becoming immobilized and sending it into flames. Lupo doubled back, sending the remaining merchantmen and its escorts ahead, in order to try and save the Veloce's crew. With the night dominated by the burning Veloce, four British destroyers nearby saw the commotion and began to sneak up on the scene. As Lupo tried to ten of the survivors, the British destroyers spotted her silhouetted against the night sky and opened fire at around 11.30pm. The British force consisted of the Jervis, Nubian, Kelvin and Javelin, each ship outgunning the Lupo 2 to 1 in terms of firepower. Lupo had no time to move and get up steam to use her speed to get away or to engage, but the crew snapped to and opened fire. Their attempts at standing against the squadron though were all for naught as the ship was ripped apart by rapid fire from the British destroyers. As the Lupo listed and took on water, the British destroyers switched fire to Veloce, sending her to the bottom before they vanished into the night, as quietly as they arrived. The Lupo's crew would be rescued the next morning by the Ardente, but of the 134 men aboard at the time of her sinking, only 29 were saved. Captain Foley was not among them. The wreck of the Lupo was discovered in 2011, about 150 kilometers southwest of Lampedusa, 32 kilometers off the Kirkana Islands, sitting at a depth of around 50 meters. The wreck is in a single section and lists about 30 degrees to starboard, right? with the starboard end of the main deck in contact with the seabed. The forward section of the bow is broken and bent perpendicular to the left, or port, of the rest of the hull. The guns of the Lupo are still aimed where the British destroyers appeared that night, ready to fight. Now history, you may be asking. We are at the end of the story of the Lupo, right? Shouldn't you be wrapping up? Why is the video still going? Why is there time left? Well, that's because I have bamboozled you. I have tricked you, if you will, because this video's purpose is to bring your attention to an amazing organization that has reached out to me by email a couple of weeks ago. 
Now, I imagine most of you are aware that shipwrecks make amazing reefs and help marine life. But what if I told you that there was something ruining the wrecks in the Mediterranean and destroying history and turning them into death traps for set marine life? Healthy Seas is a non-profit organization attempting to fix this. And before I show you the trailer to their documentary that includes the Lupo, I would like to just add that they are not paying me a cent for shouting them out and bringing this up. This is something I very much agree with and have been passionate about for years because they have a two-part mission. And let's have a look at their little trailer. For four weeks, a dedicated team of six divers embarks on a series of missions in the high seas to reclaim two World War II shipwrecks from deadly ghost nets. Operation Deep Blue Legacy, a bold mission where history, conservation and adventure converge. I will include a link to their full documentary, but ghost nets are absolutely destroying history. They are tearing apart wrecks such as the Lupo, and it is teams like this that are working to preserve them, to protect what is the only grave marker for over a hundred souls lost at sea during the height of the Second World War. You don't have to give them money or anything to support them, just simply click the link in the pinned comment and watch their awesome documentary. This team has worked tirelessly towards their goal for weeks on end, and by doing this, they have been able to create awesome sources like this amazing 3D interactive model of the Lupo on the bottom through composites of thousands of photographs. I thank them so much for reaching out and their efforts to protect history, and I hope to work more with them in future to help share their message and their goal of both protecting marine life for the future, but also protecting the past for all to remember. Special thanks to them as well for allowing me to use their footage and their model and render for this video. Because, again, they're not paying me a cent. This is just something I find absolutely awesome and I want to get behind. Thank you all for watching the story of the Lupo. Like, comment and subscribe to both me and Healthy Seas. Watch their documentary. It's 20 minutes or so. It's brilliant. And I will catch you all next time.